help from above. They are out of timeouts. The clock is running. Denver rushes three. Flacco steps up, throws deep. This is Joe Flacco, quarterback of the Baltimore Ravens. In 2008, he was a prospect from the University of Delaware. His big arm caught the attention of scouts. His attitude caught the attention of Ravens rookie head coach John Harbaugh. Joe had something to prove, you know. Joe had a chip on his shoulder, you know, and that was a good thing. You know, Joe had not come up the easy way. Flacco's college career started at Pitt, but after getting little playing time, he transferred to Division I AA Delaware. I needed to go play football somewhere, and that was really what drove my decision, is that I wanted to play, and I wanted to play now. Despite the lack of a national spotlight, the Ravens took a chance on the 6'6 kid from Audubon, New Jersey. They actually had the eighth pick of the draft, and they went back to 26. And when they went back to 26, I think that gave me a little heads up. Eh, maybe they are interested in me. Uh, Baltimore traded up. I want to be a Raven. We traded back and got so many picks, we felt like we needed to trade back up to get them at 18. With the 18th pick in the 2008 NFL Draft, the Baltimore Ravens select Joe Black. With a rookie head coach and a rookie quarterback, no one would have blamed veteran Ray Lewis if he wasn't too excited about starting over. I probably I had that thought for a quick second before I saw Joe Flacco throw a football. And I was like, this kid has a cannon. Flacco started all 16 games his rookie year and led the Ravens to the AFC title game. He's got Mason in the 10, five, touchdown! touchdown! Oh, what a throw by Joe Flacco! Flacco won playoff games in each of his first four seasons. But his failure to deliver a Super Bowl to Baltimore left him open as a media target. I say to you, Joe Flacco, is Joe Flacco one of the top five quarterbacks in the NFL? Without a doubt. What do you expect me to say? Yeah. That certainly got a lot of attention, you know, and Joe was answering exactly the right way. I mean, I think I'm the best. I don't think I'm the top five. I mean, I think I'm the best. I mean, I don't think I'd be very successful. Uh, you know. I knew you were going to say that. It's an awkward question. It's just what everybody wants to talk about these days. And I really believe that if you're going to be any good in this league, that's, that's what you have to think about yourself. Flacco has earned the nickname Joe Cool, and his laid-back style was never more evident than on his wedding day. We took a trolley around town and got a bunch of pictures taken at different places. And, you know, we were with all of our friends. And that was actually a lot more fun than I would have thought. My wife was juiced up about taking all the pictures. I was kind of just like, okay, let's do it. When we went and did it, I had a ton of fun. I think my personality is I'm a pretty hard-headed person that likes to have a little bit of fun, and I believe in my ways. He's one of the strongest-minded guys you're ever going to meet. Sometimes it drives you crazy, but in a good way. Hey, listen, listen. Oh, open on the outside. Hey, hey listen, listen. Please listen to me. Please listen to me. Okay, I said before the game that the game is in your hands, all right? Give our guys a chance. Throw hey, them I'll the ball. It, man. We got Put it. it on them. I went back at him. I said, get the hell out of here. Get out. Get off me, man. Put it on them. We got a, a policy around here we call it an open mic policy. It's not an open door policy, it's an open mic. I mean, say what needs to be said. Hey, we're 15 for 19, we're playing too conservative. They like that. If you're not man enough to put it out there and make a good case for something, then obviously it's not a very good argument. So, you know, say what you think. I'm just saying, we, in order to win a Super Bowl, we can't play like this. Out of that grows trust, and from that you have a chance to be successful. I'm not trying to argue with you, I'm just telling you what we're going to need to do. Coming into 2012, there was a buzz surrounding the Ravens' new, less conservative offense. One of the biggest things we wanted to start with was just that tempo and getting the plays in and going and just putting the pressure on the defense in the sense of running plays quickly. We're talking about an offense that's determined to be a top-flight offense and putting up points on the board. We were in a no-huddle. We didn't huddle the whole game. You know, it worked. I thought that was a statement. Two weeks later, the Ravens were coping with the death of wide receiver Torrey Smith's younger brother. But that didn't keep Smith from having the game of his life. Black of firing deep, far side, look at end zone, and it is caught, Torrey Smith! 
I just was in awe of the moment, you know? I mean, for that to play out the way it did. Flacco throws end zone. Caught! Touchdown! Torrey Smith! The magic is still in the house! Two seconds left to play. Justin Tucker for the win. It's up. That game was kind of the marker that said, you know, this team has what it takes. And uh, ultimately, to me, that was the key to the whole season. Torrey Smith. Everybody in here knows what's coming three times. Everybody knows it. What's my name? Right. What's my name? Right. What's my name? Right. The whole thing about what's our name ties into Muhammad Ali and who are you. And it's about respect. And it's about people understanding what you're really about and then respecting what you're really about. And sometimes you have to be firm in what you believe. When John Harbaugh first arrived in 2008, he needed to find a way to connect with his veteran team. Everybody got their own thing, the way they want to do it. And, you know, sometimes the guys kind of don't agree. And, you know, and, and I was kind of the median. Fast, physical, and to the point. Ray's an inspirational leader. You know, he pulls people along with him. I mean, they, you know, he kind of grabs them up. You know, he's like, he, he's a leader with a huge following. You know, that's kind of who he is. And he just, he just goes in his direction. Man, people latch on to him. One man, one, one mind, one heart, one heart, one spirit, one spirit, one, spirit, one, soul, one soul, one soul. And together, and together, together, we can do all things. We can do all things. When you got somebody that you believe in that's sitting out there in the audience, you know, that's talking to the guys every single day, someone that cares about you and wants you to be successful, as a head coach, that's everything. Well, it's going to come down to this. Dallas will get a chance to try to kick to win. Bailey from 51 to win. Kick on the way. It's long enough. It's no good. Right to the left. Yes! At 5 and 1, the Ravens were tied for the best record in the AFC. But that's where the good news stopped. Sorry, sorry, sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> Late in the game, Ray Lewis tore his right triceps. When I went to the dock, you know, she felt the divot in, in my uh, arm, and she said, uh, you tore it from the bone. Well, I was told that it was a season-ending injury, but at that point in time, there weren't a lot of answers. I listened to Doc. I said, Doc, has anybody ever came back from this? She said, no. I said, okay, I got my answer. The following week, without their leader, Baltimore was blown out by the Texans. Our bye week was the next week. I don't think we wanted to practice quite as much as John had the schedule set for. People get crazy every now and then, and you know, guys get in arguments, and that's what kind of what happened. That was challenging. You know, that was tough. A bunch of strong-minded men. But the good news was they had a strong-minded head coach standing in front of them. So if there was going to be a fight, then, hey, let's have a fight. It was described in the media as a mutiny a closed-door meeting between players and coaches that lasted for half an hour. Sizzle was like, you need to get back. He was like, everything out of order. He was like, as soon as the general leaves, he was like, it's all messed up up here, bro. He was like, man, I'm meeting today. I ain't never had a meeting like that in my life. That goes back to the open mic. I mean, we probably got more accomplished in that half hour toward you know, becoming the, the champions that we were going to become than any half hour we'd done all year. And uh, I couldn't have been happier when we walked out of the meeting. I wasn't too happy while it was going on. You know, it was tough. The Ravens won three straight after the mutiny, punctuated by a 13 to 10 victory over the Steelers. I had a note here. It says, the team that plays the best, the most efficient, the most resilient, the most solid, the most smart, the most mentally tough will win the game. I think it's head coaches, you, real, you, you look for things that motivate football teams and you look for little signals here and you look for little things here that can kind of be foundations for a football program. John's way of doing that is grabbing a couple props. What do we say? Keep digging, keep digging. And we also said, with a sword in the other hand, right? Right there it is. You know, so when he gets up there, you know, sometimes he can lose you. He can lose you, you know. Where is the wise man? Where is the scholar? Where is the philosopher of this age? But he always has a fine point that he wants to hone in on. There's always something that he wants you to grab hold to. It didn't say anything about the prettiest. It said the toughest. 
The toughest team won that football game. That motto goes for when he brought Muhammad Ali out. We saw so many Ali videos, and it was never pretty. <laughs> it was never perfect, but he never stopped. Ali really inspired us with that attitude. We finna go into heavyweight fights every week, and it ain't gonna always be pretty, and it ain't always be perfect, but we can find a way to win. They have to get to the Chargers 34 to get a first down to keep the drive and a hope for this game alive. It's fourth and 29, and for whatever reason, rather than throw the ball up somewhere, you know, I can't tell you why. I really honestly can't. Uh, I decided to check the ball down. Throws on the coverage for Ray Rice. He's at 45, 50. Coming near side, stiff arms a man. Sheds a tackle. Charger 40. Gets a block. Ray Rice has the first down. Either way, whether we convert that on throwing the ball up on a Hail Mary or doing what we did, it was definitely lucky. I don't know if anything will happen like that ever again. Kick on the way, it is up, it is gone, and Justin Tucker has won it for the Ravens in overtime. We weren't pretty, and we weren't perfect, and we never have been, and the truth is, nobody really is, but at least we were us. Jim Caldwell is in and Cam Cameron is out. Ravens head coach John Harbaugh offered no specifics as to why he fired his offensive coordinator so late in the season. When your offensive coordinator gets fired, I mean, especially me, you look at yourself you, and you look at everybody looks at themselves and says, man, you know, because you, you, you know, you feel somewhat responsible for that, you know, especially as a quarterback. You know, you're the leader of the offense and you're what makes it go. The firing came after consecutive losses to the Steelers and Redskins. The Ravens stood at nine and four with just three games left in the regular season. We got to a point in time where to move forward, we just had to make a change. I felt like we were running down parallel roads. It's kind of like the highway, the, the side road next to the highway. And we kept trying to find the, the exit to get, to get onto the main highway and really take off. And we just couldn't find our way over there. Well, I didn't know exactly where the road was, but you just kind of knew we just couldn't keep going down this road. We had to get over there somehow. We've made a change at offensive coordinator. Um, we've uh, replaced Cam with uh, Jim Caldwell. To make that move then, I think it gave our team this like shock of like, we wanna go in a different direction because we think we are good enough to win right now. The dramatic change did not have the desired impact. The Broncos trampled Baltimore, leaving the Ravens still one win short of the playoffs. Everything that could have went bad, that they went bad. And sometimes you need a harsh wake-up call. Even though we'd lost three straight games, all we had to do was win one more game. And we knew that we were division champs. The bottom line today is AFC North Championship, man. It's our time. It's our history. Let's create it right now. Let's go. Blacko throwing deep, looking for Torrey Smith inside the 10. Smith reaches up, and he makes the grab. We made the jump and got into the fast lane, and we started playing the way we knew we could. Caught, touchdown, Torrey Smith. One week ago, we was the worst team in football. You know, and, and, and how did we win that many games, and how we struggling, and that nothing can be fixed. And yeah, everything was wrong. And the next week, we come in and face the defending Super Bowl champs. And every pass was caught, every tackle was made, and that's it. That's the sports. You move on that quickly. Complete Ray Rice, 15, 10, 5. Flacco led the Ravens to a season-high 533 yards of total offense, and Baltimore clinched its second consecutive division title. We have a saying all the time. We say, you know, have I told you lately that I love you? I love this team. I love every single guy on this team. I love the way they compete. I love the way they work, the way they fight. You know, you hear Ray talk, you can understand why. And this is just a, it's a really special group of men. How far, you know, we take each other, that we'll, we'll find out. When we went out and played in New York the way we did, I thought we had that ability to be the team this year that just gets hot. 
I wrote this card three weeks ago. Remember? Three weeks ago? And here's what it said. One in spirit. Can you read that? Yeah? I wrote it fast, okay, after that loss. One in spirit. One in purpose. Do nothing out of selfish ambition. Look not only to your own interests, but to the interests of others. Be a servant, be a leader, right? That's what this team's all about. That's what you men are all about. That's why you're champions. Prior to the start of the playoffs, Ray Lewis announced he was coming back to play and that he would soon retire. I'm sitting at home and I'm like, you know what? That one little push we need, that one little push to bring eagle eye focus to our team is to let these boys know that this is the general's last ride. Today, I told my team that this would be my last ride. I looked at my men's faces and I was like, oh my goodness. I was like, man, this, wow, okay. Maybe I didn't weigh out how deep this might be. Like this huge. When he made that speech, I remember thinking, man, I hope Ray's one of those guys that goes out on top. <laughs> because if he does, that means I'm winning one this year. This ain't it, man. Yeah. This ain't it, but this yeah, stadium, man. we own it. Everything we, we got, it. we own this. Anticipation was building for Lewis's final home introduction, a staple in Baltimore for 17 years. The first year, Ray and I talked about whether we were going to keep the introduction or not. And Ray, believe it or not, Ray was okay with, I'm not going to say he was for, but he was okay with cutting the introduction out, if that was what was going to be best for our team. But then we you know, had the conversation. He explained to me how he saw it. His point was, it sparks our team. You know, it energizes our football team. And he convinced me that it wasn't about him, you know. It was about us. And as long as he saw it that way, and the players saw it that way and understood it that way, and as I got to know him over the years, that became totally evident by the final introduction when all the guys were up there, you know, taking part in that moment with him. When I came out against the Colts, it captured my entire career because it showed that it really ain't about me. It's about my team. It meant everything that their general was coming back to make this one last ride. Things happened early in that game that made you feel like it, we're going to be okay. Ray Lewis coming up the middle on a blitz. Handoff goes to Fowler, and Ray Lewis brings him down in the backfield. And I shot it. You could not hear nothing when I shot and made that play. Let's go! Let's go, man! They always talk about one of those plays you always remember you know, in your career. That's one of those moments that you always remember. The play that I remember the most in the whole game was the play where Ray gets a ball thrown right to him. You know, of course, he blamed it on the equipment, you know. He normally has pretty good hands. <laughs> hey! Hi. Hey. They got your way catching hey. the ball. Yeah, I got <laughs> Trust me, I got my grief. The guys gave me everything that they wanted to give me about dropping that interception that day. That was a gift, wasn't it? That was a happy new year. Oh, like I was going to catch it again. Let's go! Let's go! Ray Lewis came back after a 10 week absence with a tricep injury. And once again, turn back the clock. Good boy. <laughs> the vintage day by Lewis was matched by what was quickly becoming standard Joe Flacco. Two touchdowns and no interceptions. Hit a 10, five, hit a touchdown! Got his pit up! Yeah! And so Bolden has it! Touchdown! With the game in hand, it was time for Baltimore to give its general one final salute. 
That was easy. That was the easiest idea in the world. That was just, that just came, man. It was, you know, how else are we going to end this thing? I'm going to have you take a bow. I might put you on victory. Be the bad guy. Okay, I'll go get my go, helmet. Go. Yeah, let's yeah. do that. You got to go find his helmet, I think. Can you find your helmet in time, Ray? Don't tackle the quarterback, all right? I won't. We're on offense, baby. I won't. All right. And now Ray Lewis <laughs> is running on the field. It will set as the deep back in eligible the receiver formation. I'm reporting eligible. <laughs> that was awesome. Uh, you know, I haven't had any snaps where Ray Lewis has been on the field at the same time I have. So the fact that his last snap in MD Bank Stadium, I was on the field with him, uh, that's cool with me. He's on the field <laughs> for his final play cool. in Baltimore. And by the time I got out there, you. You know, every guy out there that's, you got to do this, you got to do this, you got to do this. I'm like, all right, all right, I got it, I got it. There's the snap, and that is the end of an era in Baltimore. <laughs> okay, let's go home, okay, let's go home, okay, man. And I was like, you know what, this is the reason why I said, when I said it, that this would be my last ride. Because now we all get to appreciate the moment. In the divisional round of the playoffs, the Ravens drew the Broncos. To advance, they would need to not only overcome the AFC's top seed, but also the extreme conditions in Denver. This is the coldest game I've ever been a part of, you know. It was so cold that John Fox's eyebrows had icicles hanging off of him in pregame. You know, I had my stocking cap on in pregame and he had his ball cap on. And I'm like, you know, wow, geez, I feel kind of like soft out here. I, I, need to, I need to put my ball cap on if, if he's going to have his ball cap. <laughs> so I put my ball cap on and I come out, he's got a stocking cap on. He outsmarted me. It was so much really keeping our minds off the cold because there was so many people like beefing with the fans and they was going back and forth. We love being a bad guy. We love being a bad guy. You know what they say when they see us? They point at us and say, those are the bad guys. You know, they had retirement posters up. Oh my gosh. Ray Lewis retirement party, baby! Woo! I think we forgot about it. Just minutes into the game, Baltimore found itself trailing to a team that it had lost to by 17 points just four weeks before. 89-yard return for a touchdown, and the house is rocking in Denver. Yeah, it don't matter. We got to go and do our thing. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. We kind of just sat over there and said, okay, you know, it's really cold. Let's just go out there and do what we can do. We go into halftime, it's 21-21. We, we say what we're going to say. We think we got the guys ready. And Ray says, I got to talk to the team. Let me talk to the team. I'm like, sure. Talk to the team anytime you want. I grabbed the team. And we all stood there together as men. And we screamed, no weapon formed against us shall prosper. All I asked as a leader was, can every man on this field bring nothing but positive energy? Nothing. Like, there's no doubt. There's no fear. No nothing. Let's just go win a ball game. And we take the field bolstered by that. And we're standing on the sideline, and the ball gets kicked off to start the second half, and it goes to Trenton Holiday. And there it goes. All the way back. 25, 30, and he's going to go all the way again. It's 28-21. The place is shaking. It's going crazy. I cannot believe it. That was a weapon forged against us. No weapon, man. No weapon. With 109 to go, the Ravens took the field down seven. They had no timeouts and were 77 yards away from the tying score. You felt like we could get the ball down the field in striking range. 
by the end of the game. But we need to manage the clock wisely, okay? We have an incomplete pass, and the next thing you know, Joe scrambles around, gains a few yards, and the clock's still running. Now we have a problem. The Ravens need help from above. They are out of timeouts. The clock is running. Denver rushes three. Flacco steps up, throws deep. Jacoby Jones has it at the 20. See that ball drop in Jacoby hands. That's the first time in an 80 plus thousand stadium you can hear a rat piss on cotton. No rubber fool! It's impossible! Man deals with the possible! God deals with the impossible! I'm telling you, man! The thing you remember is Jacoby catching the football and running the end zone. You forget that, that all that did was tie the game up. In overtime, the Ravens played nearly an entire quarter before seizing an opportunity to go back to the AFC title game. Intercepted Corey Graham, and the Ravens take over. A 47-yard field goal try in overtime to win it. Snap. Sam comes with the hole. Kick on the way. Kick is long enough. Throughout the playoff run, that was the most exciting win immediately after the game. The word I would use is wonderment. It was wonder. How did this happen? Not because we were lucky, but because we didn't quit. Thank you. And we just kept fighting. We just kept believing. And it worked out. We found a way to win the game. It was just so reinforcing. Denver showed us that the impossible is always possible if y'all believe in the same thing. No weapon. No weapon. Yeah, no weapon forged against us, y'all prosper. Before the game, we were out there in pregame, and we were watching the end of the Niners-Falcons game, and I saw the play where they stopped the Falcons on the five-yard line to win the game, and they were going to the Super Bowl. And it kind of hit me, you know, my brother's going to the Super Bowl. And behind that was, can't let Jim go by himself. The rematch is a time-honored tradition in sports. Champion versus challenger. In 2011, the Ravens lost the AFC title game in heartbreaking fashion. Flacco fires and so oh, caught. Touchdown! No! He dropped it. And Rooney didn't hold on to the ball. A 32-yard field goal attempt. 15 seconds left. The season on the line. Oh my God. Pass gets dropped, kick sails wide left. We had it right there in our hands. And the thing that you realize is the days are long, but the years are short. And who would have thought after 365 long days, we'd be walking into that stadium in what seemed like one day later, just like that, to play that very same team with the very same stakes. Take a look around. Take a look around. We've been here before. We've been here before. But now it's our time. We walked into a locker room and said, throw away the key. Lock the gates. Tonight they won't get out of this one. Just school them, and the Ravens have their first lead of the night. Ravens takes a snap, throws to the end zone, touchdown to England, West Welker. A long game. It's going to be a long game. Just get some things fixed. We were jabbing and punching and throwing shots, and it was going back and forth. But we all knew going into halftime that the the fight style was going to have to change. Hey guys, we got to get something going on offense. I mean, we can't play this kind of game. We got no chance to win this game. We got to start. We got to start moving the ball. You know? Maybe open up on first down and just put the game in Jones' hands. You know. 
And I was definitely a little bit disappointed about how we played in the first half. I was getting ready to, you know, say, come on, man, we got to get going here a little bit. But the good thing was is that everybody came in the locker room with that same mindset, John, Jim, myself. I didn't have to say anything because it was said before I even got the chance to. You guys ready to roll? It's time to roll. Yeah, yeah. It's time to roll on offense. Let's go. It's playmaking time. We changed our style. We went from Joe Frazier to Muhammad Ali. We opened it up. Flacco's being a stud right now. Sitting in the pocket, delivering strikes. Cool as a cucumber with the game on the line. Unfazed by pressure, unfazed by coverage. Flacco to throw. Fires to the end zone. Touchdown, Dennis Pitta! Flacco lob, end zone. Bolted, touchdown! Joe Flacco started to make the move into the big boy league. Before you know it. You look up and we're up by a score. It kind of just happened really, really quickly. And it almost had a certain comfortable feel to it. The Ravens' defense made sure the Patriots' offense was anything but comfortable. We was hitting them. We was hitting them. The game became physical. Inside handoff. Ridley's to the 45. That was the moment where we recaptured our defense, the Ravens' defense. And it wasn't just that play, but Bernard in that play kind of encapsulated the whole thing for us. That's who we are as a defense. The Ravens outscored New England 21 to nothing in the second half avenging their defeat from a year ago and earning a trip to New Orleans. Down! And the Hayes in the barn! The Ravens are going to the Super Bowl! No matter what they did as a team, that was our night. That was our night. At some point, I definitely thought about the fact that we were going to, as a team, have to beat Peyton Manning and Tom Brady to get to the point where we want to be. I think that makes it a little bit cooler, you know? Our ball, ball baby. Let's get it on, DT. Yes, you know, it was a moment of, man, you know, we're going. You know, we did it. People have asked what was different about this year than other years, and you know, honestly, really nothing. We just won the games. But it wasn't until we got down to New Orleans and into the city where I really took a step back and said, "Oh my God, we are in this Super Bowl." Excited? Yeah, very excited. You? Yeah, absolutely. How can you not be? Huh? All right, I'll see you. Hey, come here. Be good today. Okay. Proud of you. Really proud of you. You know, it was like we were back and we were playing in the. Uh, we had a game, the Sheriff's All-Stars versus Domino's Pizza when we were in high school. And my brother played for the Sheriff's All-Stars, coached by my dad, and I played for Domino's Pizza, which was the other team. And uh, there was a lot of hype for that game, too, man. It was huge. It was a big game in Ann Arbor. And uh, we came out with a one to nothing victory in the game. So uh, it was a lot like that, you know. It really wasn't much different. The dirty ends when we get done. The dirty ends in 60 minutes and three and a half hours. That's when the dirt ends. We ain't finished yet. It's going to be us, huh? That's what we came for, right? It's a big stage, but it's a small field. We're going to play in a football field, and all we need to do is what we do. Joe Flacco and the offense picked up where they had left off in New England. We have seen it on tape that that kind of play had been open against those guys down in the red zone. Green Bay had actually scored a touchdown on the exact same play. Uh, we just stole it from him and re-ran it, and it was wide open again. And as soon as he put his foot in the ground and jumped over the top, the guy was beat. Flacco threw three touchdown passes in the first half. I had a 
step up big time. I like threw it on the run. And I just and I just kept running like. Two games. It's two games, two halves, two games. Here we go. The onslaught continued at the start of the second half. When he ran that kickback, I was like, wow. I think we're going to do it. I think we're going to do it. Uh, you start to, that starts to creep into your mind. You don't think, oh my God, we're going to win the Super Bowl. What you think is, is that now we've got a big lead and we need to play a certain type of a game, a field position game. And we were on our way to doing that. Stop him, baby. Stop him here. Kaepernick wants to throw under pressure. And he's sacked back yeah. at the 40-yard line. Yes. He had just gotten sacked and the clock had stopped. And I'm like, why is the clock stopped? Why is the clock stopped? There was a ton of time left in the game, but I'm already worried about the clock stopped. Why is the clock stopped? Oh, you know, I, it was kind of, I don't know what to think. It was just crazy. We're 13-28 left in the third quarter, and somehow a massive outage of power in New Orleans Superdome has put this game on hold. I'm not going to accuse nobody of nothing, because I don't know facts. <laughs> But you a zillion dollar company, and your lights go out. <laughs> no, <laughs> no way. A zillion dollar company? Ain't no way. Now listen, if you grew up like I grew up, and you grew up in a household like I grew up, then sometimes your lights might go out. Because <laughs> times get hard. I understand that. But you cannot tell me somebody wasn't sitting there, and when they say, the Ravens about to blow them out. Man, we better do something. We're going to win this game no matter how long it takes. No matter how long it takes. There's no weapon. Not even a power outage. That's a huge shift in any game, in all seriousness. And, and as you see how huge it was, because it let them right back in the game. The 49ers scored three touchdowns in a little over 12 minutes. This is what the Ravens feared coming out of that mm -hmm. half-hour outage. The Ravens' lead was five. With less than two minutes to go, San Francisco had fourth and goal. So keep them out, we win, Dean. Let's go. One play. One play. One play. To hold them, what this city, what this team, what you are known for, which is defense, I tell everybody, give me one play. Unable to run out the clock, Baltimore took a safety, leaving one final play. We have four seconds left, and we have to cover a kickoff after a safety to win the Super Bowl. So it's not over yet. Are we going to win this? Yeah, the game's over if we cover this kick. Right. We don't make it easy, do we? No, we don't. At that point, I had pretty much realized that we were going to win, but I was like, kind of still like, are we going to win this? Are we really going to win this? If he starts to break it, go tackle him. Really? I don't know. I mean, what else the book can they? I don't know. I mean, they might be able to give him a touchdown on that, but I don't know. Hey, if he breaks it, if he busts this for some reason, go tackle him. I don't know what the rule is on that, but I will. I'm going to. I mean, what does happen? You know, nobody's ever explained it to me. I'm sure they give the guy a touchdown anyway. But, you know, I was, you know, I was joking. I, you know, I was half serious, but, you know, really just joking. I would never run on the field and tackle the guy. Just get him down. Just get him down. Get him down. Get his tackle. The Baltimore Ravens are Super Bowl champions. They happen to be walking across since my brother. It's not just another coach. So, you know, uh, a little bit of empathy goes a long way, and it was pretty easy for me to put myself in his shoes in that moment, you know, for a moment. Congratulations. Oh, I love you. Congratulations. Okay. Hey, you too. Good job. Proud of you. Proud of you.
It was a hard game for them to watch. And when it was all said and done, they felt happy and they felt sad at the same time. You made this all happen, Mom, for both of us. There are no losers. There are no, there are no losers. Mm, I love you. We don't make it easy, huh? Yeah. You're up there and you're kind of just so excited, your family's running onto the field, and then all of a sudden somebody whispers in your ear, hey, do you see your car over there? It's your car. I got a car? Do I really? Oh. I get a car! And I'm like, wait a sec. <laughs> you know, you don't, it's just one of those things you don't think about. Uh, but I'll take it. <laughs> hey, baby. Don't get any better than this, my man. No. Hey, baby. Go. No. For me, to win like that, to leave the game like that, There's no other way I will write the end of my story. No other way. Was it supposed to happen any other way? No, it's just not. It was it supposed to be easy? Was it supposed no. to blow out? It wasn't pretty, but it was us. And we ever did was, buddy. No. That's the beauty of it. That's the beauty of it.